Social media was supposed to be the left's domain. Certainly in the early days, it seemed like it would be an unstoppable force to connect the young and take the movement to victory at the polls. If you decided elections by likes and retweets, well, we'd already be three years into a socialist dystopia. But culturally, social media has fermented a runaway form of aggressive liberalism, synonymous with the left. Debates on gender, masculinity and race progress at such a pace that the general public have no chance of keeping up. And it is different, I think, to 90s political correctness, because those debates, particularly around gender and acceptance of homosexuality, were held in an era of fewer channels and media outlets. Therefore, the progress was understood by all and longer lasting. Now, discourse evolves at a frantic pace, leaving left of centre parties adopting or echoing stances which the vast majority of people are barely aware of. Joe Swinson's policy on a third gender on passports and Corbyn introducing himself via his preferred pronouns left many ordinary people scratching their heads. It's time that the left realised social media is an unreliable friend. Hmm. I kind of reject the idea that there are people who are interested in women's rights and trans rights and then there's ordinary people. For example, there are trans people all over the country in all kinds of communities mm -hmm. and I think they would regard anything that helps recognise their rights to be treated equally as something universal, not just for a liberal metropolitan elite. I, 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 what I take from what you're saying is, is the fact that age is a huge divide. It's actually the most powerful divide in politics now. This it's election a big divide. Really I'm not sure that. it's the only one. I mean, you mentioned trans it's rights. It's not the a only one. A phrase like cis, for example, which in our kind of like lovey-dovey metropolitan world we're, we're aware of. If you ask the, the vast majority of Britain what that means to introduce yourself as a cis male, I think that would uh, there'd be a lot of younger people that wouldn't know what that and meant so either. And so just in case there's anyone watching this who doesn't know what it means, <laughs> oh God. a cis male is someone who was I thought you were going to ask me gendered to do it. <laughs> as male from birth. <laughs> yes, yeah. Um, and identify as and, that. And identify yeah. as that. I think that, yeah, I know, you know, I, I get emails from people saying my pronouns are at the end of their email. Mm. Do you have that on your email signature? I do. Not on my, on my Twitter, I do. Yeah, I, I mean, swear to God, people around the country are watch, watching this right now going, what? My, what, yeah, what do you have on your email? Oh, no, no, I don't. But Sorry. some people sign off their email saying, you know, F for her, her, email address, yeah. my pronouns are she and her. Mm. Just so that you know oh, I get it. how right. I self identify. Yeah. I'd, the first time I saw that, which wasn't that long ago, I, I didn't have a problem with it. I just learned that that's something that people are doing. I mean, I think what I take from what you're saying is that a lot of people feel left out of this conversation yeah. and that they're not included in it and that they're not necessarily on board with it. And I think I agree in the sense that when you look at, for example, New Labour, one of the big problems of New Labour for me, take its multiculturalism agenda, was that it was... I agree, obviously, with the, the sentiments of, of celebrating the fact that we're a multicultural society, but multiculturalism under New Labour was something, I think, in hindsight, that was imposed from the top down. It wasn't something that came up from a groundswell mm. of grassroots mm -hmm. feeling. And you need, you need consensus if you want to build social change and you want to build a society that's inclusive. You need to bring people on board. But the question is, how do you do Not to reject the fact that mm. some people but are I just talking about it, but how I, do you I'm do saying it? that it's different now and it's able to advance a, a, a pace that most people can't keep up with. And the problem for the left is that way of thinking is now synonymous with the left politically. So it's almost like woke is kind of like the, the sort of militant wing of momentum. Well, can I just say, I totally disagree that social media is the domain of the left. You know, often people say it's both sides, and I think this is actually an example where it really is. Because in the last few years, the right has used social media much more effectively than the left. If you look at Donald Trump... Do you mean uh, in sort of, sort of adverts? Or uh, are you talking? I mean, actually, in terms of engaging hmm. with people that think the way that they do, and then being able to actually have that materialise hmm. into winning elections. If you look at Donald Trump, he is whether you agree with him or not, he is prolific on social media. We talk about so uh, if you look at even with David Cameron's election, part of the reason Cameron won or did better than was expected was because of the way they effectively use social media. Well, he, you know, he had a message that chimed with more people. But I mean, he you mentioned knew, stats. used new technologies to engage people. Well, you mentioned it? stats on social media. I mean, you look at the Facebook likes uh, in November of 2019. Joe Swinson, 14,000. I mean, 
I think I'm almost touching that number. <laughs> uh, Boris Johnson, nearly 750,000. Nigel Farage, just over 900,000. Uh, Jeremy Corbyn, nearly one and a half million. I mean, if you, if you did it as a Facebook poll, we'd already all have free but broadband, take, but it's a lot more complicated. I take those kind of stats with a pinch of salt because yeah, exactly. it's really easy to access what people will call click farms, where you can actually artificially generate likes and interaction and traffic, etc. But to me, I don't regard social media as the domain of the left. 67% of people in the UK 67% of the UK population are active social media users, so that is prolific. But what I think is I regard social media as a tool. I think in lots of instances, particularly in the 2017 election, the left was more organised in, in leveraging that tool. They had a better strategy around it. I think when it comes to Donald Trump, I think what he's done is use this new media to capitalise on people's distrust of traditional media. Mm. So, for example, he will um, say fake news, they're doing this. And actually, when it came to this election, I found what the print media did as really quite overstepping their mark. So you saw many what? print... What? Well, you saw many print publications. One, in particular, springs to my mind, publishing the email addresses of political candidates to try and leverage their audience, to pressure them to stand down. What's it got to do with the print media? Who can stand in an election? It's none of their business, quite I think, frankly. I think, just to clarify, I'm not saying that uh, social media is an absolute preserve of the left. I well, think it, it represents isn't. a unique problem for the left because it's being sort of uh, bound up with some of the the more woke elements of uh, liberal thinking and the public are sort of thinking if I if I vote Labour are these the kind of concerns that will be seen as priorities when actually there are if other bigger things. If they don't get a grip on it what will happen? Well, the, the left. Then, yeah. Well, I mean, I think it's. I think what has happened is is what's already happened. I think we're now in the aftermath of that. I mean, you look at like canvassers and focus groups throughout the election that were coming back and saying in all those Labour marginals that voted Leave that this is a this is a problem. And yet, because the the sort of tenor of online debate was probably more Remain led, mm. they moved to a position uh, position that was ultimately destructive for them. So I think it's already happened, and it's whether or not they continue to listen to themselves or or the message that the right. electorate are sending them. Same. I mean, you're definitely right that how people respond on social media does not reflect how people vote in the election. So mm. If you look at um, Labour and the Conservatives, Jeremy Corbyn's Facebook videos got 86.2 million views and um, Boris Johnson's got only 24.5 million. Mm. So, you know, if you were to try and predict the outcome on that, you would be so off mark. But this comes back to my point about age, that a half of people under 24 voted Labour and only 14% of people over 70 voted, voted Labour. So, the people who use social media are more likely to respond to the left, but they don't vote. They and don't they vote. Really need to be young. Even though yeah. more young people registered to but vote, you didn't vote? see the why gains. In, they they Is it because they're too young or they just can't be bothered? I mean, that's such a caricature. Well, I think no, there are a well, number well, of reasons. Well, this election, unhelpfully, was also timed with holidays from universities yeah. and people weren't oh at their addresses. Oh, my God. No, not, that's not the reason, though. No, lost, but there are lots of reasons why young people move around a lot. It's um, they're, they're not, They don't necessarily have a habit of voting. They need to be... They need to... You if need they're to that make motivated, Afra, they'll vote. Listen, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I have to say, I struggle to vote issue. in this election. I struggle. What do you mean you struggle to vote? I struggle to vote. In what way? A lot of us felt very politically homeless in this election. And I think a lot of people mean, no. in the country feel very disenfranchised by the way our party politics is representing us at the moment and I so think I feel like I'm, that. I'm already in the habit of I voting slightly, if it was my first time what would I have done? I slightly take issue with letting uh, young people off the hook because the thing is you know people say well, it won't make a difference politics will never be sexier or more no, vital no. than it is now I mean sexier might be the wrong yeah, word yeah, 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 but yeah, I mean yeah. a lot of people make the analogies with uh, uh, sort of a uh, Netflix type miniseries and, and it's true it has been compelling viewing so my, my question to young people is if you're not going to vote now when yeah. will you it's but never been more important quickly, politics what, doesn't have to come to you you've got to come to it where i think social media is failing is with accountability so at the moment mm. any old random can set up an account with any old and name say and anything. publish any old uh, any old content you should have get rid of anonymized accounts make sure that there's accountability for what people are saying and that would stop some of the problems that we're discussing only I'm the saying... debut boy jeff could have linked jeremy corbyn mm -hmm. politics and sexy it's not after <laughs> you hear those three put together time to press pause on that debate. Now, Afra, when you've done the ironing, uh, you need to darn my socks, honey, and I'll have a scotch and soda. And can you get the hostess trolley? Because I'm hungry. Deary. Coming up next on the pledge. Happy wives, happy lives. <laughs> <laughs>